When it comes down to weight loss, people don't want to know exercise, no eat less because that Dr. Ben Ng and I work in Mount Elizabeth Novena. My clinic is called Arden Endocrinology Specialist Clinic. Obesity is extremely common. It's increasing all across Asia and the world and unfortunately Singapore is no exception. Increasing numbers of people are getting obese in Singapore and that's associated with more and more medical issues. The problem with obesity is that the definition of obesity in the West and the East can be something quite different. For starters, we use what we call a body mass index. And a body mass index in the Western countries use a cutoff of 25 grams per meter squared, whilst here we use it at 22.5 kilograms per meter squared. In simple English, what this means is that you do not need to be so heavy to be classified as obese in Asia. And the problem with that as well is that we don't have to look fat. Ultimately, there's something called tofi, thin outside and fat inside, which is common in the Asian community. And the problem with that is that you can look slim, but inside all the fat is in between your intestines and liver and so forth. And that causes a lot of health problems, including diabetes and heart disease and metabolic syndrome. Obesity causes a lot of problems, stroke, heart disease, diabetes, high cholesterol. These are the more commonly well-known ones. However, it does cause an increased risk of cancers. The amount of weight causes problems within the joints itself. And as you correctly pointed out, being obese, unfortunately, does interfere with overall reproductive hormones. So the problem with infertility is common in women. Uh, we tend to have a lot of uh, men who have problems with infertility as well, and skin diseases and so forth are very common in obesity. Unfortunately, I think there's a great diversity among people and yes, some people tend to, certain races, certain individuals tend to be higher risk of obesity and also obesity related complications, unfortunately. Let's start by saying that it's not always the type of food you eat, but it's the amount of food you eat and the total calories that you consume. So I think it's very important. I think overeating is clearly wrong. I think you need to eat the correct amount of calories suited for you and any excess will lead to obesity. Of course, certain foods tend to increase the risk because they are more easy to eat, they are more attractive to you and so forth. But when you come down to fast food and hawker food, I think the choice of the food is very important. I think it's very hard to just generalize that that kind of food is very bad for you. I think moderation is the key. I think it's important to make sure you don't overeat because what we don't want to do is, oh, that is food is very good and we're going to eat a lot of it. I can tell you whatever that food is, if you eat a lot of it, it's probably going to be bad for you. I think the treatment for obesity is very diverse. I mean, the, on one end, it's diet and lifestyle are a pinnacle of therapy. And to the other extreme, there's metabolic surgery where you can potentially do operations and so forth and reduce the weight and all the metabolic risk factors. And there's everything in between. I think, you know, there are medications that help you. We have psychologists in the team, we have dietitians, we have nutritionists and so forth. But I think it's important for when a patient approaches I want to lose weight, they first of all employ diet and lifestyle first in combination with other things to try to get the weight down. And they, there's not just I want to lose weight, but to have a target. Ultimately, how much weight do I want to lose? How fast do I want to lose that weight? And make plans to sustain that weight loss. And that's probably the most important thing. If that fails and there are enough risk factors of patient choice, then you may need to do something more serious, like uh, more aggressive like surgery. I mean, there's no sure formula for weight loss. And I think it's a combination of the, the motivation of a patient, the expectation of how much weight you want to lose and why you want to lose that weight. Ultimately, doing any form of tests here is important. We know what the problem is. We know why you can't lose weight and we, we know what we need to do to lose that weight. However, doing it and the amount you can put in is variable and the response is variable. 
But I think it's important to know that at least doing these kind of tests, we can measure, we can have a, and we can formulate a plan. And it's perfectly fine for many patients. Listen, if you want me to do A and B and C, I can't do it. And that's fine, but we are aware they can't do it. Therefore, something else is required. That is how we work about things. It's not, uh, I, I think when we do any kind of testing and all that, it's not, you do this and you must follow this plan. If not, you will fail. It's perfectly fine. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this kind of diet. I don't like this kind of food. I can't do this exercise because I got a bad knee. And that's fine. But once we take that out of the equation, then we must supplement it with something else. I tell most of my patients here that ultimately what we are trying to do here is we are trying to improve metabolic efficiency. In other words, we are trying to make them feel better. We are trying to get them to use energy better. The problem of obesity in simple terms is the body doesn't want to use energy. It's just keeping all that fat in. If we can get the patient to feel better and make the body want to use more energy, side, the side effect of that is weight loss, not the target. And that's the most important thing to differentiate. So essentially what we do in the clinic is what we call indirect chlorometry. So at the end, it's a simple breathing test, it takes about seven minutes. And with that, we can know more or less how much energy they burn a day. On top of that, what kind of energy are you burning? We have two different forms of energy, fat and sugar. For someone who wants to burn, who wants to lose weight, we try to increase the fat burning capacity and if necessary, improve the metabolic rate as well. You can't do it too much because they'll start to feel tired. So adjusting that is delicate. And what we do is we need to take the correct history, find out what the patient is doing, whether there's any associated illnesses, what diet they have and so forth, and try to change that the best we can, using medications in certain circumstances to try and enhance that process. Just like every problem in endocrinology, when someone comes in motivated and wants to lose weight, what we try to do to help them is to actually analyze why and what they're doing wrong. And what we do is we really do a metabolic analysis. We check their body composition, we look at their fat and muscle mass, we check their metabolic rate, we check their basal metabolic rate, we find out what their lifestyle is and what the problem is on why they can't lose weight. And what's really nice about it is that when you do that and you really analyze things, you can come up with a plan. And I think that's the most important thing. People, when it comes down to weight loss, people don't want to know exercise more, eat less, because that almost never works. I think what you need is a prepared plan and to actually walk the patient through that plan. Whether it's with medication, whether it's without medication, the patient understands, listen, I'm doing this and it's not correct for me. Now I need to adjust it this way. You make sure it helps you give whatever help they need, a dietitian, a psychologist, a physiotherapist and so forth. And then they achieve that target because of that teamwork. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for your regular dose of Asian health information.